I ended up in the aviation industry because I had this really strong drive to make a difference in the world from a pretty young age. So I have a core value of fairness. So I headed to Washington, D.C., started working in politics at a really young age, and then started contracting with various agencies, figuring that if you can make a difference in an industry like the federal government, then that could make an impact on the broader global, global culture. So I started contracting with various agencies, ended up with the Air Traffic Organization and the FAA, and saw this brilliant population that was very operational, very male dominated, and they knew that they needed to change. So I am, uh, I am human capital, human resources by, by trade, as we say. Uh, and so my first uh, impression was that, yes, it was very heavily male dominated, especially in a lot of the uh, positions that I was hiring for or that I was uh, recruiting for. Uh, and, and, and so, yes, that did awaken another level of uh, awareness, uh, and I have become very passionate, um, as I'm sure we'll talk about later, uh, in terms of what I thought uh, the industry should and could look like. Uh, and so um, I think the first thing I realized was how few women pilots there were in, in, in aviation, and then also how few uh, uh, women uh, technical support uh, such as uh, inspectors and engineers, particularly aerospace engineers, there were. Uh, and so for me, it became important to, uh, to, to be able to expand on the candidate pool, um, be able to find people who were just as qualified, but perhaps a little off the beaten path um, to, to come into the field of aviation. Yes, it is difficult to change a culture and it's difficult to see those impacts. So for me, I get frustrated by how slow it is because I feel like we should be able to talk about what these changes are, what's needed, and then you should be able to impact it within several years. It took a little while for me to see some momentum gaining at the air traffic organization specifically. But being with them just over a decade, in that amount of time, I have seen some big changes. One of them's around more inclusion in language. And that's to any group that doesn't have voice. That our senior leadership is definitely making an effort to make that language more inclusive, which opens up the conversations to more people. We are very lucky because we have Terry Bristol as our COO. So she is a very strong, intelligent woman leading a workforce of almost 40,000 people. So we have a great role model for that. And she definitely holds the line for making sure that we're continuing to move our culture in a positive direction. Great question. There are definitely big challenges for women that move into the aviation industry in that the culture itself may feel uncomfortable to some women. I've seen some women, of course, succeed in that environment and not just succeed in the male dominated culture, but to become leaders of change in that culture. So not just women succeeding, playing by the rules of the male culture, but playing by their own rules, thereby changing the culture. And that's incredibly inspiring. At the same time, I've seen women that have left the aviation industry because they want to be someplace that feels more comfortable right away. I advocate to all women that are joining our industry to get networked, get mentors, find somebody that exhibits the passion and dedication that you have in your field, whatever it is, and make sure that you're connecting with them daily because you can overcome anything that's happening to you if you just reach out and ask other people to help you because there's many of us that have been through whatever it is that you're feeling. And we need the best of the best in our industry. So we don't want you leaving. That is, the, the question brings me joy. <laughs> the, I think that um, for the future, 
I think the future is bright. I think the 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 cat's out the bag, as we say. Uh, people, the kids are beginning to see uh, the doors that science and technology opens, not just for them personally, but for mankind in general. Uh, I think we're we're seeing uh, just tremendous leaps and bounds in terms of what we're able to accomplish because of STEM. And so I think that the 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 notion that it will ever become a uh, has been or a dying subject, I think is is uh, is it's never going to happen. Um, I think that young girls and uh, underrepresented groups are starting to see a place for themselves. They're starting to find their their stride. They're finding to starting to find their niche. And I've noticed that it's not just STEM now. It's now STEAM, uh, the A for the arts. And so that's also an important element uh, because we have you know digital illustrators that are out there and computer engineers that are out there. And these are things that you can do for, you can use game, you can do gaming, you can do uh, comic books, so many things that you can do now with these uh, additional uh, uh, STEM skill sets. And so I think, I don't think, I see it, I see a very bright future and I see a lot more inclusiveness in the, in the future of STEM and for these young people. So I'm excited about that. Um, in terms of for me, uh, I'm gonna continue to do what I'm doing. I love it. Uh, I do a lot of it uh, uh, in, my, in my job. I do get to dibble with, dabble with it a little bit um, because we do have a STEM program and we get to do symposiums and uh, we get to do um, outreach events and things like that. Um, we're excited because we're going to be able to offer a virtual platform um, for the first time in our organization. So very excited about that. But with the community service work that, I, that I'm doing, uh, we go into schools. We are doing uh, virtual activities with them. Uh, we've been doing it since you know the beginning of the pandemic. Um, and we're reaching thousands of students. And so I'm excited about that and I don't see I don't see that light going out anytime soon for me. To ensure that this work continues, again, hate to be boring, but requires ongoing resources that are predictable. So you can attract the best of the best to deliver this programming and also that you have the budget to execute it. So it will require women to continually move into senior leadership positions so that they can influence how we are resourcing things. That's very influenced by the culture and what is deemed important. So if we wanna drive change, we have to stretch ourselves, be dedicated, stay committed, do the hard development that needs to be done, even if it makes you feel a little uncomfortable so that we can continue to move into senior leadership positions and be able to pull people up that don't have voice in the current system. I don't wanna see us just drop resources into a place that's not used to having them. I wanna see us put the resources, but also we, we need to put the educators uh, in place to be able to, to marry the two together, if you will, the resources, the students. Uh, it, has to be, uh, it has to be a continuous thing. It can't be a one and done. And so, um, you know, if I had any influence at all, it would be to say to businesses and industry, you know, yes, we need your resources, but we need your time as well. We need more volunteers and we need more advocates and we need more champions um, to make sure that the message that we're sending, that the message gets, that it gets heard and also that it sticks. First of all, congratulations to you guys for leading such an incredible week. It is so important uh, that we have these weeks to connect. And that would be one of my wishes, would be that during a week like this, women have multiple opportunities to connect and build their network and maybe find that mentor that they really connect with and are able to emulate in their own careers. We're here. We're here. <laughs> we, have, we are making a difference and we're going to continue to make a difference. We're going to continue to move the needle. We're going to continue 
to become a very, very intricately woven fabric, part of the fabric in the history of aviation. I, I think that we just, we have to, it's a, again, it's around awareness. Uh, but I think that we really have to, particularly in this, in this very special time, I think that we have to get more women, more people of color into aviation. And I think they have to be, they have to help us carry the banner around, not just in the United States, but around the world. I think it's really important that we have a strong representation uh, of women because, because when we look at, I, I look at it as being sort of one dimensional, but there are so many other layers that we can add uh, to the rich history of aviation. We've all, we have a really good showing already, but I think that in the days to come, we are put, sending people into space and we're talking about a space hotel and all of these things. Women have to be a part of that. So that one change that I would like to see is the culture move into a culture that represents that rich landscape of not just the United States, but the world. So how do we represent all voices? How does everybody see an equal place? And I think that because we are a microcosm of the broader society, yet aviation is this incredibly huge force and impact, it is the perfect place to start that change. I think in terms of whether or not we're doing enough, um, I, I, I feel pretty good. We're doing plenty. And this, just you being able to find me is proof that we're doing something right. So I think we're doing, we're doing fine. I think there's more to be done. And I think that we're, there's a lot of partnership that's still out there that we can tap into with other in, with industry and other organizations um, and some other federal agencies as well. I think there's still some work that can be done. Uh, and there are lots of initiatives, I believe, that are being put in place uh, that I think is going to help make that work uh, easier. And so I'm just looking forward to that. I'm looking forward to being a part of that. Um, uh, I spend a, a portion of my time every day thinking about ways to reach more people, particularly in the line of business that I'm in. Um, we, when we go out and do targeted recruitment activities for those uh, mission critical positions, such as engineers and pilots, I always do that. We, my team, we always do that with the thought in mind of where can we uh, turn over a rock and find a gym? And, and a gym being someone that is off the beaten path, who probably is not in an area where you're going to have a high population of uh, women, for instance, or persons of color or other ethnicities. It's just, all, and, and, and it happens. It's happening more and more. We're actually finding those pockets or those targeted groups. And so I think, uh, I think we're doing it. I just think we need to do a little bit more but I, I feel good about where we are right now. Absolutely, it's still a male dominated in industry. No doubt about it. No doubt about it, it absolutely is. Um, uh, moving the needle is good and that's what we're doing, but we are not uh, at, at, by any stretch of the imagination um, where I would like to see we, us in aviation, uh, in the aviation industry in terms of representation. Metrics may show you the numbers going up, but how are we impacting the industry culturally so that we're not just functioning within a male dominated culture, but changing that culture? Hopeful, we're getting there. Yet we didn't, uh, so we, I don't know that any country uh, got to female pilots or Asian pilots, uh, American pilots. I don't know that any, any of us got there quickly or easily. Uh, I think it's been, it's, it's, it's been um, a combination of um, sacrifices 
and education and awareness and compromise and and a lot of tears and 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 lobbying and and just everything that it takes to change um, the course of a nation. When I hear about the story of the all female flight flying out of Kabul is that I could not be more inspired than to hear of six women who conquered incredible challenges that I will never understand and most likely won't live through. It inspires me to be grateful for all that I've had and to see people that truly push their boundaries and accomplish more, I'm sure, than what they ever thought that they could do when they first came up with that idea to be a pilot. Um, so for me, I was getting ready for work, listening to the story on NPR, and had to stop getting ready because I was so teared up I couldn't put on mascara. And I found that incredibly ironic. <laughs> So to be so inspired that you're ruining your makeup over six women flying out of Kabul is, is just so inspiring. So what I would say is that for if you leave this event with what that one mother said to her daughter when she asked her, do you really think I could be a pilot in Afghanistan? And that mother re replied to her that there's nothing impossible. Everything is possible. Um, that's not to say that the work is done and that it's going to be easy, easy going from here. But it does say that it can be done. It's been done and there's room for more. And I think that she'll have many, many young ladies coming behind her that are going to uh, be empowered and encouraged by what she's doing and they're going to then want to follow. So it makes me hopeful. You are so much smarter, more courageous, more capable than what you've ever thought you are. And to stretch yourself every day, do something that makes you uncomfortable. And when you do that, you're going to see what your limitless abilities are. And they're going to continue to reinforce each other until you've surprised yourself. And you're in a leadership position where you are able to impact hundreds, if not thousands, of other women. Congratulations to all the women around the world in aviation. It's not been easy and it probably won't be easy. We still have some firsts. We still have some, some doors to kick in. So we can do them with spiked heels. We can do them with Timberland boots. We can do them in tennis shoes, uh, but let's do it. Dee and Ali, thank you for sharing your thoughts with us as part of this special week focused on women in aviation. I know that you are both held in very high regard at the FAA and across aviation, and quite rightly so. You clearly work tirelessly to promote equality and the opportunities for future generations. You are not alone at the FAA, and I was fortunate enough to visit the team in Washington DC a couple of years ago, so I saw firsthand just how much dedication there is to this cause. I also want to highlight the work of Sadie Perez and Sharon Boson at the FAA. This team, along with many others, deserve to be recognised for their commitment and dedication to promoting equality, diversity and inclusion. For that reason, I am delighted to present these inspirational women with one of the first ever Aerotime Aviation Achievement Awards. This award is made by the Global Executive Committee of Aerotime, and I would like to read the citation in recognition of their energy and the dedication shown to furthering civil rights and equality across the FAA and the aviation sector, for developing inspirational programs and promoting diversity and inclusion across the workforce, for encouraging the next generation of women in aviation, and for engaging in all opportunities to continue this important work. The Aerotime Global Executive Committee recognises the positive influence of these efforts and the significance of the impact on the aviation industry and its people, both today 
and into the future. Ali, Dee, Sadie and Sharon, congratulations for being among the first recipients of this award as we continue to announce award winners throughout this week focused on women in aviation. I'm so, so sorry that we cannot meet to hand over this certificate and trophy in person, but it will be winging its way to you in the very near future. And we hope that it will serve as a constant reminder of the gratitude of so many people for your efforts over many years. Thank you. That is awesome, beautiful. And I can tell you, I, I, Sadie and Allie are both, I've known them for years. They are both extremely passionate women and they bring so much energy into what we're doing. And I could, I, I am so honored to be a part of this with them. And I really, really am honored that you saw value in what I'm doing and what we're doing enough to, to even invite me to be a part of this. This is awesome. Thank you. And I'm incredibly flattered to be listed with Sharon, Sadie, and Dee. I cannot tell you what an incredible honor that is because those are three women that work tirelessly for exactly what we want for women in aviation. So thank you.